Jesus to remind us of that. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis all the way at the beginning, chapter number one. This year we are getting ready to move into a season of, of uh, a theme that uh, we kind of have cooked up that uh, is going to call us into a season of creating. Um, creating. What does it mean for you and I? to take seriously that God is calling us to create something in 18. And uh, we think that the creating that God is asking us to do certainly uh, starts but does not end with ourselves. Um, it continues to our families and our communities, our country and even the world. That in many respects, what God is asking us to create is uh, always contextual, but it is never limited. It is always abounding. It is always spreading in the spirit of infusing life into what uh, lacks life, infusing light into what lacks light, infusing hope into what lacks hope. And so we're gonna be compelling us as a congregation throughout this year, what does it mean for you to create in 2018? Create what must be created. Um, I don't know if there's some circumstances in your life personally that you can imagine God is inviting us to create something anew, but I'm for sure that there is uh, a lot of work that we have to do in our communities and in our society to create something that uh, creates room for all of us to experience God's best. Amen? And so we're going to be uh, moving deeply into this theme over the next uh, several months. Certainly this consecration is going to give you and I a chance to tap into some tools of the spirit, hopefully that we may take for granted or may even be anonymous to us. Uh, but let's make every effort uh, to imagine how we do this in the name of the Lord. Genesis chapter number one is where we're going to start. Uh, just to give you a quick little uh, 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 hermeneutical, exegetical framework about Genesis, many people uh, in our traditional hermeneutical space, if you were in Sunday school and whatnot, uh, some of us may have been taught that Moses wrote Genesis. Amen. Moses was the one that kind of received the revelation and, and took the revelation and, 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 and dictated Genesis onto the page. But we, we have some other ways to imagine how uh, by divine inspiration, Genesis came to us as a text to continue to introduce us to the story of God's work in the world. Uh, Moses is likely not the author of Genesis, amen, because Moses hadn't been born yet. Praise God. A little bit of time discrepancy there, praise God. Moses probably came, uh, uh, as we know, uh, in the probably third uh, third millennia before the birth of Jesus, and, and we know that uh, according to the best uh, science we have, uh, Earth that is easily a couple million years old, and so uh, Moses wasn't around yet, but what we do know certainly is that there have been many kinds of creation stories that have been captured by many different cultures, and when, when uh, the Jewish nation uh, was called together, there were uh, a number of these creation stories that by divine inspiration we uh, have received by faith as telling a story of the care and the trajectory of how God created the world. And so if you take a, a look at the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, uh, it is called the Torah and there are often um, uh, contrib contributions of various different priests and oral narratives that help to construct what we call the modern day uh, biblical text. Uh, one is called the Jehovah uh, kind of focus that really focuses on the transcendence and the power and the work of God. Elois is uh, the, the tradition that focuses on the priestly nature of, of the work of God and how God's work has been to help redeem and address the fallen nature of our society. The Deuteronomistic uh, focuses on the legal aspect, if you will. And then uh, P is for the prophets. It focuses on the social kind of context, the, the ways in which uh, folks are intended to live in 
uh, equity and in fairness. And so all of these have helped to produce what we call or what is called the Torah. Uh, Genesis is one of these books where you find a collection of all of these different voices helping to capture both history but also inspiration, theological inspiration to teach us something that God wants us to know about God. Hello, somebody. And so always remember that the biblical text uh, is, is, is always trying to teach you something that you don't already know about God. Because if you can learn more about what you don't know about God, you may be able to gain more about what you need to know about yourself. Mm. It's kind of quiet in here. Amen. Amen. Uh, and then we're going to get into it in the, in the scripture, but just always remember that uh, at the, 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 <laughs> one, of the, one of the, one of the theologians, uh, Athanasius, he says, we cannot know the essence of God because God's essence is unknowable. It's just too big, magnanimous. It's I like, you know, just the little bit of information we know about God. You see how folk argue and kill each other just over what the little bit they get old to. Anybody ever met somebody who felt they got a revelation from God and all of a sudden they couldn't do nothing with nobody else? Like that little bit of kernel just blew your mind so much that you don't even know what to do with yourself. Hello, somebody. And, 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 and this is why it's so important for us to remain in community as we learn about God because we are part of a millennia-long conversation about who God is. Amen. Amen. It didn't just start when you got here. <laughs> didn't just start when your, when your tradition got here. Didn't just start when you start speaking in tongues, rolling on the floor, when the Baptist folks start baptizing folk, when the, when the Methodist folks started Methodizing people and the Catholic folks started Catholicizing people. It, it started long before then. But that conversation with the Spirit of God has created space for all of us to come and have fellowship with God and with one another. And I don't know about you, but that's quite a story of God that has room for all of us. Amen? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Genesis chapter number 1. It's a very easy to remember scripture. Some of us may have learned this scripture in Sunday school. How many learned this scripture in Sunday school? Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Amen. Any of you ever had my parents used to make us quote a scripture before we ate dinner or something like that? Any? And I always used to quote the shortest one. Jesus wept. And then you just get right into <laughs> Any other Jesus wept quoting <laughs> saints in here, amen? Well, this is probably the second scripture after Jesus wept. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All right, let's eat, right? Um, so this won't be a hard scripture for you and I to remember, but I want to submit that if we're going to be doing some work of creating in 2018, then this is a great place to start. And it happens to be our lectionary passage, which is another great uh, 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 starting place. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. And verse number two, the scripture simply says, in the beginning, somebody say in the beginning, in the beginning. God, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the face of the deep. And the spirit of God hovered over the waters. This is the word of God for us as people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. All right, we're going to uh, speak from the topic, um, making something out of nothing. Making something out of nothing. And may bow your heads with me as we pray and ask the Spirit of the Lord to be present with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. Thank you for the word of God that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Bless the word that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our hearts. So we will not sin against you and send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. Let it rest upon me and even the hearers of this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Somebody say from nothing to something. Now, one of the most difficult things to undergo, dare I say, endure is change. Certainly, uh, all of us talk about how we want to be different. And all of us, particularly in the first part of 2018 or any new year, we launch into this huge task of vision boarding and New Year's resolutions. 
and all these different kind of things. I think I preached a sermon some time ago, said, forget a res resolution, I need a revelation. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and it's, it's no secret, amen, that some of us spend more time making resolutions and less time seeking revelations. Things that we need God to reveal to us about what must be done in us and through us and with us if we're going to be faithful in this year. Now, be mindful, brothers and sisters and loved ones, that this Sunday in the liturgical calendar is called the Sunday of Epiphany. And if you know anything about an epiphany, an epiphany is something that kind of springs out of nowhere with a light bulb. A light bulb comes on. Anybody ever had an epiphany? Amen. This, 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 this thing that you didn't expect to, to, to come your way that illuminated, brought a whole lot of clarity, maybe even a new idea, dare I say a revelation to you. That was so clear that nobody could take your confidence pertaining to that thing. Hello, somebody. An epiphany. But don't you know that in the history of the Christian church and preaching and discipleship, there is space just devoted to you and I exploring how can we be positioned to have an epiphany with, from God. Amen. That God does not want your relationship with God to be so uh, cooked <laughs> from the beginning that there is no space for the surprising work of God in your life. Anybody want to be surprised by God? Amen. I hope you do because, you know, I know I know some of us got an imagination that we think is pretty expansive. But I want you to think about the scripture where it says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask or think. I want you to think about this for a second. <laughs> Man, I feel like preaching already. <laughs> that we serve a God who is able to do ex, y'all know what exceedingly means, right? And abundant, y'all know these words, right? They're not like GRE words, at least I don't think so. They're long, though. <laughs> but you know what they mean. These words mean that God can do far more than what you can ask with your mouth or think with your mind. Mm. And the problem with many of us is we're not asking nor are we thinking, and that is why we are not creating. A lot of us have gotten so stuck in what has been given to us, and we think that's the final reality. But I want to submit to you that there's something more that God wants to do that is awaiting the kind of uh, uh, unleashing in your life, in our lives. But we have to first do some focusing on how we activate an imagination that can create space for the surprising work of God. Now, you can apply this to any part of your life you want to. Some of us, we only apply this to when we're at church. So when we're at church, boy, we can have an experience with God because at church, for some of us, our mind and our spirit, we allow it to just be up free and unleashed, and you kind of float and just levitate and woo and you, you know, start speaking in tongues. Why? Because in church you feel free to let your mind be filled with the things of God so much that it is ineffable, meaning inarticulatable, meaning you can't, you only had a human words for it, you start speaking in tongues. That's what it means. You get so filled with joy that you start speaking in tongues, and folks be like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> 
foliage. You're like, it don't take all that. That's because your mind is too small. Now that works at church, but think about this on your job. Think about this in your family. Think about this in our country. Think about this in your own experience. All the things that remain the same because your mind is too small. You can't imagine creating anything differently because you take what is given to you as fixed from the beginning. But could it be, Lord, help me in here today, <laughs> that in 2018, this could be the beginning of you creating that which you have never imagined to be possible. <laughs> Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost in here today. Could it be that there is no limit for the people of God? when you are tapped into the creative power of the one who moved from nothing to something. Now, I don't have as much time as I would want, or I preach on this for two hours, but I only have about 20 more minutes, so I'm going to have to pick it up a little bit. But I want you to appreciate a couple things. Number one, there are folk out here who believe that they can move from nothing to something. And most of the time, they are using whatever they have to enrich themselves. And it's easy, you know, we can point to the systems of injustice and, and the oligarchs, the plutocrats, these kind of exploiters of, of human uh, 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 creativity and, and, and systems of power. It's easy for us to focus on a lot of that and lose the reality that change must come to us or we will become the very thing we are saying we are trying to change. William Temple, he's a writer that I, I like a lot. Uh, this is a quote he says, that the worst things that happen in the world do not happen because a few people are monstrously wicked, but rather because most people are just like us. Mm -hmm. So when we grasp that, we begin to realize that our need is not merely moving quietly on in the way we are going. Our need is for radical change, to find a power that is going to turn us into somebody else. Leave this up here for a second because I, I want you to read over this one more time and think about all the many folk that you can uh, uh, amplify as the source of your problems. That certainly aren't you. Amen. I mean, we can major in that, right? <laughs> oh, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. We spend every day responding to the foolishness of Donald Trump. And we don't remember that Donald Trump that had nothing to do with you not studying for your test last night. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump had nothing to do with you and your kids, your, your partner, the way you spent your money. Hello, somebody. <laughs> You want to know why I know that's true? Because you had these problems before Donald Trump became the president. I wish I could talk to somebody up here. Now, Donald Trump has introduced a whole set of new problems. Don't get me wrong. But some of us have to appreciate that it's not the few monstrously wicked people out there that are keeping us from being able to change. Some of this is about us. That most people, look around, look around the room, just take a look around the room. Everybody, turn your head, it won't hurt you, it won't mess you up. <laughs> most of us, we just like each other. The world has convinced us to think we very different. Well, you black, you white, you gay, you straight, you, you documented, you undocumented, you educated, you not, you rich, you poor, you from Oakland, you from Berkeley, we all the same. <laughs> I wish I had a church up in here. <laughs> you, just, you, you just got a different experience. But you about as selfish as the person next to you. Hello, somebody. You about as petty, amen. Hello, somebody. 
You about as broke, amen, it's hello, amen. We all the same. Or at least we more alike than we are different. But the world will make us think we so different and we got to change this monstrously wicked thing, not realizing that God is wanting to do a radical change in you. And think about this, as hard as it is for you to change, it's just as hard for your loved one next to you to change. So you ain't real patient with folk that can't change fast enough to adjust to you. But when it come to you, you like, just give me a little bit more time. I just need, I know I, I, know I got a little, little mess, but just give a, give a brother a little, just give me a little grace. Ain't it something? Just, Lord, you can give, you ask for more grace than you can give. Hello, somebody. So you and I have to be honest about what is necessary for you and I to create. We can't be so fixated on, we go back to 2017 messages around bad news, fake news, that we forget that there's some good news about our change that is possible. You and I don't have to stay the same. You and I don't have to be locked into the reality that is handed to us. You can be suffering, you can be going through difficulty, but how many of you know that that does not have to be the final say for the child of God? You may not change the outcome, but you yourself will come out as pure gold. Lord, let me calm down because I'm not supposed to preach like that just yet. But give your neighbor a high five and tell them from nothing to something. Now, if you and I are gonna move from nothing to something, there's a couple of things that I think the scripture gives you and I that you can't equivocate on. The first thing, according to Genesis chapter one, it's a very easy concept, but you better do it. Begin with God. Somebody say begin with God. In the beginning, God. That should just be your first truth for 2018. I'm not going to start with nothing else but God. 2018 is going to be about God. It's going to be about what is God asking me to do. If you're going to create something, you got to start with the creator. <laughs> Just, we just in, 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 in the way one-on-one. This is the way one-on-one class. Amen. In the beginning, God. One of the great challenges we have is that we usually are people who are prompted to do theology from below rather than start or begin with a theology from above. That we'll, 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 get, we'll get caught into the, the griminess of your struggle and try to figure out where is God, where is God, where is God, where is God? And there will be moments where the griminess of your life, the drama of your life, the, 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 the haters and the difficulties will drag you into the mire, but you should not begin there. You may end up there, but you should not begin there. When you are in a relationship with God, you begin from the heavenly places, from an elevated consciousness, from a mindset that is about limitless. Woo. You, you begin from above. Psalms 19 verse 1 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of God's hands. That when you and I are beginning with God, we begin with a couple of things. Number one, it's great to know that God, according to our theological tradition, God creates ex nihilo. Is the, is the way that we talk about it. God creates out of nothing. That when God speaks, at the beginning of time, there was nothing. And God spoke and it came into being. What you think about this? Because all of your situations you're going through, you may feel like you have nothing. And all it takes is one word from God to create everything. <laughs> everything can be created from one word from God and you worried about what you don't have. 
because you've got a theology that starts from below. Rather than a theology that starts from above. God loves to begin with nothing. So some of you, that should be some good news. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, the, the boss said you ain't got the skills. You'd be like, but no, that's all right. That's just where God wants to start. Amen. You don't got the intellect. That's okay. You don't, <laughs> it's okay. You ain't got the money. That ain't, that ain't no problem. You ain't got no boo. That's God and you. God got you right where God wants you. <laughs> Hello, somebody. God likes to start with nothing. Why? So nobody else will take any credit for it. Woo! You ought to give your neighbor a high five and tell him, don't you try to steal God's credit now. When God does it, don't you start popping your collar like, see, this is what happened was. No, God likes to start with nothing so nobody else can take the credit for it. God likes to start with nothing so you can have a story to loudly proclaim to anybody who wants to listen that God did this. God did it, and it was marvelous. Lord, have mercy in my eyes. Listen, if, 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 if you can start from above your mindset, then everything you're dealing with ain't nothing but a setup. If you keep your mind, the scripture says, set your mind on. on things above. Now, this ain't talking about you being so heavenly minded that you ain't no earthly good. We're not talking about that. We're talking about where will you begin? In the beginning, God. So can you start with God? Or are you going to be too caught up in you and your limitations? You may be losing today. But God. You may be struggling today, but God. You may be filled with a lot of pain and hurt and heartache, but God, with one word, can change the whole situation all the way around. The higher you begin, the more faithful you can become. The lower you start, the more compromises you will be forced to make. So you better begin with God, child of God. Begin with God so you can become more faithful. Don't start with what you got going on or you will be forced to make compromises. All right, questions, first set of questions. How are you ensuring 2018 will begin from above? Rather than start from below. What are you doing to ensure that you're going to begin from above? You're going to start with God. Rather than getting caught down there in your grimy experience. You're going to have griminess. It's just a part of being human. When God created, God didn't create you and I out of heavenly material. God took some dirt. Hello, somebody. So you gon' you gonna get dirty now. You already dirty, if the truth be told. That ain't that ain't intimidating God. So if it don't intimidate God, why would it intimidate you? Why you want your situation to be clean and easy and no, no, no. I think when it's clean and easy, God's giving you a reprieve. It's like you you going on a vacation. How many go on vacation and don't ever want to come home? Hello. But realize, now this is going to mess up with some of y'all. If you stay on a vacation too long, it ceases to be a vacation. Oh, I'm going to go to paradise. You live in paradise, it ceases to be paradise. <laughs> I wish I had a witness in here. The grass always looked green on the other side until you get over there. Then you're like, doggone it, I didn't see that rock. I didn't see that snake. I, why? Because you were making a temporary visit. So if you're expecting life to just be easy, 
what's so great about you that life should be easy? It ain't easy for none of us. I mean, I, you know, Jesus, it wasn't easy for Jesus. And he created the whole thing. I wish I could talk to you in here today. Oh, you get a little difficulty on? Oh, I just don't know, what, what did I do wrong? You was born, you didn't do nothing wrong. You woke up this morning. That's it, it, that, it that's it. Life ain't about your comfort, child of God. It's about your growth, it's about your development. It's about your maturation. So you got to begin with God. You got to begin with the one that created you in the first place. Start with God. Don't start with all your drama. Start with God. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. Think about that. You start with God, you start with the one that knew you first. God knew you before your mama knew you. Now you know that's some knowing. Don't nobody understand me but my mama. God does. <laughs> God does. So start with God. Give me a neighbor high five and tell him, start with God, start with God, start with God. But the, the, if you're going to create in 2018, the second thing that you got to do is fill the void and bring the light. Somebody say, fill the void, fill the void. Bring, the bring the light. Now the earth was formless and empty. The other scripture, the other translation said the earth was form, was, was, was void and without form. And darkness was over the face of the deep. If you begin with God, God will always give you something to start with. All right? Listen, God creates out of nothing, but God always gives you something to start with. God creates out of nothing, but God don't ever ask you to create out of absolutely nothing. You have the power to, but God always... Hits, baseball fans, the baseball fans? Yeah, but y'all know what a single is, right? <laughs> God always hits a single. And then a get on base and God says, pinch runner, calls your name. <laughs> Hello, somebody. A pinch runner is somebody that trots out of the, out of the bullpen or with the bench, dugout. Sorry, I'm, baseball's not my thing unless the Giants are winning. Touch your name, amen. <laughs> Pinch runner jogs out the dugout after the batter has done the hard part. Some argue the hardest thing in sports is to hit a 90 mile an hour curveball coming at your head. <laughs> I might agree. Amen. You seeing a rotation of the ball and it's moving, it's coming at you 90 mile an hour and it's doing like this and all of a sudden it takes a dive. And you don't know it's getting ready to take a dive until the split millisecond at the end. And then you got to swing the bat off of your shoulders and hit the ball. That's some hard work. Guess what? God always does that part for you. <laughs> so you caught in your situation. We're caught in our situation. And we think that it's the hardest part. Oh, God, why am I here? God said I did the hardest part already. Now, that's, that's quite a claim that God is making. I already did the hard part. Now I'm calling you out of the dugout. And you start on first base. And all you have to do, ooh, this baseball analogy I didn't plan to use, but it's good. It's getting good to me. All you got to do is wait for the next move of God to do the next hardest part, hit another ball, and then you run on contact. You don't even got to, Lord Jesus, you don't even have to, you don't, are y'all, is this just good to me or is this kind of helping you up in here? You don't even have to, you just got to wait for God to hit the ball and then when you see the evidence, that it's okay for you to move, you run with all your <laughs> And sometimes it may get close. You ain't gonna always just run in, standing up clean, you know, popping your collar like, yeah, no. Sometimes you gotta slide in, get dirty. Sometimes the guy will get the ball and he'll try to tag you, boom, hit you. 
Hello, somebody. But, but God's still doing most of the work. All you got to do is use what God gave you. Your eyes to see, your legs to run, your hands to stretch out. But you ain't got to do all the work. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? I don't know about you, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad that there's some moments in your life that will be void without form. It will not be the total manifestation, but God will always give you something to start with. And the question you must wrestle with is what am I doing to fill these voids in my life? There's a lot of void that is in our lives. Pain has evacuated us. Disappointment has evacuated us. Hopelessness has evacuated us. And so what God has told us, has prompted us to do, can get hollowed out by the ugliness of life, of pain, of injustice, of, of exploitation, of arguments and hatred. Can hollow out parts of your life. And you'll be void. You'll feel empty. But you have to do the work to fill the void. Now, this is why we do the consecration. You know I'm going to do the shameless plug on the consecration. Because the way you fill the void spiritually in your life is to engage in spiritual practices. If you're lonely, you don't fill the void by surrounding yourself with more people who are sucking from you. People looking for love from people who are incapable of providing love. So instead of love, you just get proximity to another living, breathing organism. But if that's all you want, you should get a snail and put it right by your bed. That, if that's all you want is a living, breathing, warm body that can't give you love, can't give you truth and, 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 and enrich your life Get you something that at least you're bigger than, you know, <laughs> somebody. Don't, 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 don't abuse yourself by bringing close to you that which cannot provide you what you need. Well, it's a hard one because, you know, a lot of us, we, 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 we don't be making decisions based on what we need. We make decisions based on what we like. So how many know you can learn to like something that is not good for you? Oh, I can't stay here because that's a whole other sermon. But I'm just going to let your mind just run on that one a little bit. Because y'all know what I'm talking about. You can learn to like something that's not good for you. Food, sex, drugs, power, money. And you like it so much that you just keep sopping it up and sopping it up and sopping it up till it wrecks your life. Then you got to come back to God anyway. <laughs> Why not just what? Begin. Oh, Y'all catching on. I know it's going to take a little while. got to fill the void with spiritual practices that net the result that we are asking and looking for. Uh, we're going to have to go deeper in Bible study on this one because I, I don't have a, a, enough time. But if you begin with God and acknowledge that you have a blank slate, God will use the disciplines, practices of prayer, Bible study, service. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a trip. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to Italy and Tunisia because I need to get away from folk. <laughs> so I'm going to go somewhere. Don't nobody know. My phone won't work, and I can just not talk to nobody. They talk to me, and I'll be like, me speak no English. I, or I say, I, I only talk, I guess I'm in, they, I'm in Italy and they speak Italian, and I'm in Tunisia and they speak Tunisian. And so I would be speaking English, 
and no one, nobody know nothing. I won't know what they talking about. They won't know what I'm talking about. And I can just practice the discipline of silence. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You know, that's a spiritual discipline. I was at the Oscar Grant, <laughs> I was at the Oscar Grant uh, uh, vigil, and you know, I did my little talk uh, on, on behalf of support of Mother Wanda and, and, and all our comrades, Uncle Bobby and everybody. And so I was walking, you know, through the crowd, and a brother was sitting in the back, and he had a big flag, and he just, he was just waving me down. And you know, you, you know, you kind of prepare for almost anything when you're at a rally, because you know, a lot of different folks show up and whatnot. And so, you know, I'm, I'm like, okay, hey, you know, I'm walking by, and he just hugged me, and he wrote on a piece of paper, thank you for your words. And I was like, oh man, no, no problem, you know. And, and I was like, what's your name? And then he wrote down, I take a vow of silence every Monday. And I almost spoke in another tongue. I said, <laughs> touch your neighbor. Come on, that is a spiritual discipline. Now, now understand, <laughs> your vow of silence can't be like invoked when you're supposed to be in a conversation <laughs> with someone. I'm gonna think about silence. You know, that's how you acting petty. You know, it's like you know, I'm. A, Pastor told me to take a vow of silence. I don't, don't bring me into your mess. That's not what I'm talking about. A vow of silence is a spiritual discipline that is used to help you stop talking so much so you can learn to listen. Hopefully first to God. Vow of silence also sometimes means that you don't feed your ears and your heart you know, all the negativity that you are used to consuming. Some of us, we just consume so much garbage and trash, and then we wonder why, why I feel like trash all the time. I don't know, maybe because that's all you listen to. It's all you watch, and it's all you eat. You eat garbage, don't know why you feel like trash. You listen to garbage, don't know why you feel like trash. You watch garbage, don't know why you feel like trash. You watch Love and Hip Hop, you eat Lil Wayne, you go to McDonald's, and you try to figure out why you feel like garbage, because that's all you eat, watching, and, 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 and listening to. And, you know, I, I mean to hate on Lil Wayne and them, because Weezy, you know, he don't got much to say to you that is going to help you create much. Praise God. <laughs> uh, and and uh, if I'm wrong, then, you know, I'm not, though. But if I am, <laughs> then you just pray for me. <laughs> McDonald's not good food for you to eat? Why you eating at McDonald's? You know any food that you can leave out. <laughs> Flies won't come and touch it. It won't mold. It just turned hard as a rock. The longer you leave it out, it just turns into a rock. And you putting that in your body? That's, that's just garbage. Everybody say garbage. garbage. You, you, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Don't fill the void in your life with more garbage. Deal with something that's alive. I, I got to move on. Last point. Oh, I didn't get no questions. What's the questions? Are there voids in your life which must be filled through this season of consecration? So what are the voids? What are you willing to do? Oh, pastor, I can't imagine not eating any meat. I need protein. <laughs> You can get protein by things other than dead animals. Just do a little research. Are you willing to go the extra mile? Or are you just going to eat what's just easily, oh, I'm this, I'm that? Listen, sacrifice, 21 days won't kill you. One of my the greatest basketball players ever played, Hakeem Olajuwon, would go through Ramadan in the middle of the year, of his season, and he could not do all kind of things, playing back. It's one of the MVPs. It was during the, and the reason why all of us found out about it because when he was playing well into the NBA Finals, Ramadan was during those, those months, and so he would have to literally show up exasperated or whatever, his body, and he was still winning because it was a temporary thing, but it, it, it speaks to the power 
of your will, your mind, and what you can do as a replacement for a temporary season. Don't be using these excuses. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do that. Oh, I got to do this. I can't never do this. I can't never make it. Oh, my body just so trained this way in my body. That's part of the problem. How many of y'all got woke up during an earthquake? How many couldn't go back to sleep during that earthquake? Amen. I was sitting there wide awake like, Lord Jesus. The earthquake started moving. I jumped up on my bed, and I went and checked on my daughters because I was like, Lord, and they just sleep. Snoring. One of them's just... My wife, Sheree, said, earthquake, and then she just went back to sleep, and I'm just sitting there just, and I'm just like, Lord Jesus, that interruption kept me woke in every sense of the word. Could it be that this consecration is an earthquake that you need in your life for 2018 to be better than it was in 2017? I can't talk about how the light can penetrate the darkness or penetrate the surface of the deep waters in your life. But just remember, the truth of the gospel can go deeper than any lies of the enemy. Some of us, we got a lot of lies below the surface of your life. You got to unleash the gospel. Last thing I'm just going to refer to, and I'll pick it up next time, is... uh, I think my point is talking about engaging the spirit. Scripture says that the spirit of God hovered over the waters. Where is God's spirit hovering in your life? The, the, the Hebrew word for spirit is ruach. You say that, just say ruach. Make you feel like you bilingual or trilingual if you bilingual or speak another tongue if you spiritual. Man, just ruach. It is literally the breath of God. And this breath in the creation story hovers over the waters. God's spirit is always hovering over your life. Even in the most difficult places, God's spirit is present, hovering. Have you engaged with this spirit lately? Or is God's spirit, God's presence, anonymous to you? Oh, I, I'm spiritual. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just spiritual. That's not good enough. Being spiritual is not good enough. If that's where all, as far as you want to go, that's fine. But th- that again, your imagination is too small. Folk think that if you follow Jesus, you are being too confined. How is that possible when Jesus is all in all? Now, that's quite a claim, I know, for all of us folk who are you know, trying to make all these religions work. I, 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 I appreciate you. I do. But I just want you to know that it is the spirit of God, the spirit of Jesus hovering over the beginning. It, it helped bring nothing, something out of nothing. And that spirit is hovering over our lives. It is breathing. God's breath is literally Breathing into your circumstance. So when was the last time you engaged the breath of God? When was the last time you inhaled God's breath? And exhaled God's breath? I know Terry McMillan, you know, she wrote all these great books and they moved called Waiting to Excel. When the last time you inhaled God's breath? When the last time you exhaled God's breath? When was the last time you engaged with the Spirit of God? Why? Because God's Spirit is hovering. God's Spirit ain't hiding from you, playing hide and go seek. (laughs) 
That's not God. God is hovering in your pleasure, in your pains, in your hardship, in your struggles. God is hovering. God is asking you, are you going to take a breath? You going to inhale some of this good stuff? Forget the puff, puff passing. I'm, 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 I'm going to take a good in, in, inhaling of the Ruach. I know you got some purple and you got some, some this, uh, my syrup, but I'm, I'm, I'm on the Ruach tip this year. What are you talking about? Just, just, just don't even trip. You ain't, you, you, this stuff, this stuff, this stuff too strong for you. You can't handle what I'm talking about. Hello, somebody. Are you, are you, are you, are you about that life in 2018? Inhaling the breath of God. Why? Because it is this breath that literally activated Something out of nothing. Uh, come on, stand, because I feel like preaching. My time is gone, and we got to do communion. But grab somebody by the hand and just close your eyes. Soon, you know, as soon as I stop worrying. <laughs>